Hi everyone! Today we will talk about another group of yarn dye fabric, knits, or like they call it also, jersey. So let's start our lesson number 7. Knitting is the process of fabric forming by intermeshing the loops of yarns. When one loop is drawn through another, loops are formed in horizontal or vertical direction. In reality, knit jersey fabric looks like this. In difference of all other types of fabric, we can create it at home using knitting needles or crochet needle. For fabric production, the factory uses knitting machine which has many crochet needles, but basically fabric pattern looks the same. When we design knit fabric, we have assigned the stitch size. But I suggest just find the garment or even swatch which you like in terms of density and which has the same thread thickness which you're going to use for your future design. Scan it. Then create second layer and try to recreate cross stitch. Choose pencil some light color, maybe white. If we select the distance from here to here, it will be half stitch size. Create part of stitch. Then duplicate and rotate 180 degrees. I do this because I want it to be symmetrical in both directions. It will be easy for future repeat. Flatten both layers. To me it's a little bit narrower than scan stitch. Let's add more white area. That's good. Duplicate this half stitch and one more time. Looks nice. Then duplicate the entire area and flip horizontal. We have the stitch column. Then duplicate this column and we have some decent jersey area. To make it realistic, select some area, choose bucket tool and fill with black. Now we can make a repeat. Looks like it's from here to here vertically and from here to here horizontally. Select Edit Define Pattern. Then create a new layer. Edit Fill Pattern Our Pattern. See, we have the neat pattern in front of us. Then we can color it as always. Choose the paint bucket, contiguous and anti-aliased unchecked. We have solid knit fabric. But what if we decide to do pattern? Of course, the easiest way, check the contiguous box and create some pattern using bucket and duplicate method. Drag with Ctrl Alt. But do we have any faster method? Yes, we do. How usually knit garment looks like. If the yarn dye plaid mostly has a vertical design, knit sweater in 90% has a horizontal design. Because of knit technique, look again in this image. Obviously, horizontal design is much easier. Vertical direction in this case will cost you a fortune. So basically, the normal knit sweater will look like this. Let's try to do our own stripey design. We don't want to fill any single stitch like this, right? So I'll show you one simple trick. Choose the row you want to fill. You can indicate it with ruler. Go to rectangular marquee tool. Select single row marquee. It's allowed you to select horizontal line with one pixel length and click on desired row. Then eliminate black area. Use magic wand and click on black without hole. Then go to select grow. See, you have one row of stitch entire selected. Then choose the desired color. You can use default palette or your own seasonal palette and fill the row. For shortcut, instead of paint bucket, use outback space. If you want to do wider stripe, Select several rows with single row marquee. Eliminate black area with one click of magic wand, contiguous and anti-aliased uncheck, and go to select grow. Now we have three rows and we can fill them with brown. With this method, we can recreate any of our favorite sweaters. Let's choose this one. Try to imagine what is the real size of this sweater. 
Select and cut this sweater only. Go to image size. What is the average size of men's sweater? I think about 20 inches. Key proportions. What is the resolution? Needs to be the same as our pattern. Then select some area what we have to recreate. For now, let's do all over pattern. It's easier and much cheaper for execution. Place this pattern on the upper layer. Then go to our knit pattern, select row on the brown area, eliminate black, grow, fill with brown. You can do the same with the next brown stripe, or you can just duplicate it with drag with cutter out. And one more. Then we have two brown rows. Then three more single. Then brown again. Then we have two blue lines. Then brown again. I think it's enough for repeat. Now, what do we have on the background? This area is kind of cream. We can select it in different way because it's pretty large area. Select with marquee too, but be sure you indicate partially the highest and lowest row. Again, eliminate black and do select grow. Fill with cream color using paint bucket tool. And here again. Then all other background area is white. Just click fill with paint bucket. Now let's select the repeat. Just be very careful with selecting part of stitches. They are very tiny. Edit, define pattern. You can make another layer, edit, fill pattern. See, we can send it to the factory for production. In the same way as we spoke in all our previous videos, you can go to indexed color mode and make as many different colorways as you want. Now, is it ready to send to the factory? Yes, absolutely. But we can try to make it more fancy for presentation. Another thing, for sweaters, sometimes you don't need to send them exact color swatch to match. Sometimes it's enough to send a piece of thread. So, let's see what we can do now for the realistic look of our design. My main concern is this black outline. As we understand, it just represents the shadow of thread and has nothing to do with our main thread colors. Let's call it shadow color. In our case, it's black. So we can make it any color. Let's select and tweak it with some nice shade which sits better with our design. Also, we can use more complicated method. Select dark brown color. Go to select, modify, expand, choose three. Now select our shadow color, fill it with main dark brown and make it a little bit lighter. Don't you think this area looks more realistic? 
I do. Then select blue color, select modify, expand, select shadow, fill it with main blue. Try to adjust. I think for blue doesn't make sense to make it lighter. Let's make it darker, like this. The same with cream colors, select, modify, expand. shadow area obviously make it darker we have only white area remain we can only select remaining shadow area fill it with white and make it darker now look how much realistic our design looks we can also make new colorways if we go to index color, we can see 10 exact colors, 5 main colors and 5 shadows. We can change them in our favorite way, mood, color table. But for each main color, we can create its own shadow color. See, make it approximately. It doesn't have to be a certain percentage of main color. Just make it pretty. Now, how much more we can enhance the look of our design? As you probably noticed, very often sweater has some heather effect, especially for adults. Whereas kids sweaters usually have bright, clean colors. Let's assume we create adult sweater. Select all main colors. Make copy paste to create new layer. Go to filter, add noise. Zoom in, choose uniform, monochromatic. Move slider until you achieve desirable look. Click OK. Looks more realistic, isn't it? Of course, now we cannot change colors with index color method but it looks great for presentation, so I recommend use this filter after finalizing colorway. One more trick. When a design needs, I try to apply 3D effect, so all stitches look embossed as a real neat sweater. Go to Layer, Layer Style, Bevel and Emboss. From drop-down menu, choose Inner Bevel. Go through all characteristics, there are no exact recommendations. Just click preview, go to slider by slider to adjust pattern looks to your desired level. This method adds kind of 3D effect and believe me impresses your potential client a lot. You can enhance the effect to make deeper look. Go to lower layer, select shadow colors. Go to Image, Adjust, Hue, Saturation and play with darkness. So, see, now we have a new neat pattern with almost realistic look ready for presentation. If you close or delete upper layer with visual effects, you have a pattern with exact main colors ready to send in to the factory. Now we know how to create neat fabric using Photoshop. So please subscribe to my channel, like it if you still didn't, and please don't forget to check your bell. Next time we will continue our lesson about knits and we will talk about Argyle, Varyle and Intarsia. See you soon!